Today I'm going to run through the settings for the FT8TW Android app. So if I just start by clicking the FT8 icon here, we can see that the application starts. So I'm just going to plug the cable in. So today I'm using my Yesu 857. So I'm just going to plug that in now. Plugged in the 857 and you can see that we have the option for the sound card that we're using today. I'm using a Digirig and I'm just going to select that port. It's the only one that's an option anyway so I'm just going to click on that. And you can see the sign saying rig connection succeeded. And because we're in the CQ window you can see that we're already getting messages of people calling CQ. However, we need to set it up first. So I'm going to click the cog on the right hand side, which is the settings icon. And in the settings, if you see right at the top, I've got my call sign to Echo Zero, Hotel Kilo Zulu. Next box down, I have got my grid square. And the third box down is the time offset and I can synchronize that and it will use GPS to synchronize. So I'm just going to hit the sync button. As you can see, it says we're using GPS and the local clock is 311 milliseconds behind, which should be okay. So the next option we have is to set up our radio type. I'm just going to click on the box where it says Yesu. And if we scroll up to the top, way up to the top, we can see we have the other crafts, we have the icons, those of icons, we have the amazing Kenwood series, we have QRP Labs, we have the Zygus, and coming down alphabetically we have Yesus. Now I'm running a Yesu FT857 so I will select that. So you can see in the box where it says radio I have Yesu FT857 selected. The next option we're going to change if we need to is going to be control. Okay, so the control the options are Vox, CAT, RTS and DTR. I'm using CAT. So I'm going to leave that selected. The connection type below it I'm going to leave selected as USB because I'm using USB-C on my Android. And the next box down we have the options changed for values for the data bit, stop bits and parity bit. Now these should be the same as you have selected in WSJTX when you're running it on your laptop um, using Windows or Linux or Mac OS. <coughs> next box down we have the option for changing the CIV and we also have the option for changing the board rate. I'll just tap board rate. You can see we have the normal scroll menu. I'm just going to go for 384 because that's why I've set up. The frequency box speaks for itself. It's where you select the frequency and the frequency we're going to be using today is 20 meters so I'm going to leave it on 14.074 megs. Okay we'll continue and we will scroll down. We'll leave decode mode fast decode. We'll leave message mode on standard. Scrolling past the options for SWL. Coming down we can see that we can change the transmit watchdog. The transmit watchdog is basically the timeout for when nothing's happening, when you're not getting a reply from a station. We can leave it on five minutes, we can change it if we want. We can change it to ignore, five minutes, all up to 95 minutes. I'm going to put it on five. The no response option, again, you can go up to from ignore all the way up to 12 calls. I'm going to put it on ignore. Audio frequency, we're not going to change. We're not going to put it on transmitter receive split over because we don't need that today. Everything else will stay the same. You can see here that I have an option to auto upload to QRZ. That's selected. This means as soon as you complete a QSO on FT8, it will upload to QRZ if there is a connection to the internet. We have the option to spot PSK reporter. And I'm going to turn that on. Today I'm using a vertical antenna. 
and everything else we're going to leave it as it is. So we're going to come across, so next to the settings at the bottom where you have the button for QSO logs. I'm going to tap that and it will show my last QSOs that I logged. You can see I've been working earlier today. Next button along is Spectrum, I'm going to tap Spectrum. And you can see we have the normal standard waterfall that you would expect to see in WSJTX. We do have options here and I'm going to take one of them now. So the option I'm going to take is original and I'm going to switch it to denoise so we can lose some, lose some of the noise in the waterfall. You can see coming down the screen that we have people's call signs. We have the date timestamp. Along the top we have the yellow bar that's going across. That is in fact the transmit receive cycle. We have the bandwidth indicator and the red line is where your transmit is. On the laptop version of WSJTX it will be a little red goal post. Okay, so I'm going to tap the call in button now. Got to calling. And you can see this is where we would call CQ down in the bottom. We can see we have the options for the different messages we're going to send. Just come off that and I'm going to tap on decode. The decode window will show us all the messages that people are sending. So in WSJTX this would be the left hand window of your screen. Okay we're going to go back to calling. Again the calling window is where we're going to do our transmitting and if I just rotate it to the horizontal you can see that now we have the waterfall on the left and we have the calling window on the right. Additionally in the top right hand corner we have a megaphone or a loud halo or a bullhorn or whatever you want to call it and it's got a line for it meaning that we're not transmitting at the moment. We also have an indicator for SWR useful for when you forget to connect your antenna. We also have the frequency and we have the time. Okay, I am going to click the loud hailer so we're going to transmit. You'll notice the call sign is coming down the left hand side again and we're going to transmit our CQ message which should change once I click the megaphone. So I clicked the megaphone and I clicked CQ and now my first message will be CQ, my call sign, my indicator. You can see the megaphone is flashing to indicate that we're transmitting. The yellow bar is going across the top to show that time is passing. In the waterfall you can see my call sign. If I tap on it, it puts a little line on where my call sign is. And now we wait. There we go, so we immediately get a return call from India Romeo 3 India Alpha Romeo Uniform, who is based in Italy. I recognise that call sign. Okay, unfortunately we didn't get anywhere with that as contact. So we'll go back and try again. See if we get anyone this time. Now, downsize this application. As far as I can make out, it only sends and receives FT8. I haven't been able to find a way to change it to FT4. I haven't been able to find a way to get it to send WSJTX. However, as the application goes, the fact that you can replace your laptop with a handheld device that can go in your pocket, um, I think the benefits are um, far outweighing any shortcomings that you may perceive.
Okay, so we've got a new call sign, uh, Sierra Papa 306 RAF, and I believe that's a Polish call sign, and that is commemorating the um, efforts and the sacrifices of the Polish Air Force pilots in the Second World War. So I hope I get this one. There you go, so you can see we sent the standard message, we're sending message number three, which is the signal report. Let's wait for the yellow bar to go across, receive the last signal. Okay, there we go. So we've finished the contact. The QSO has been updated and sent to QRZ automatically. And the seven threes have been sent. Let me, I need to turn it vertically. So to get to logs, we're going to turn it vertically and we're going to tap on QSO. And we can see at the top we have Sierra Papa 306 Royal Air Force. So thanks for that. It's a really nice contact. So there you are, that is FT-8 TW. It's available on the Google Play Store. Um, it's available from a GitHub repository that the um, developers created. And as far as I can make out, he puts new releases on the repo before they go into Google Play. Um, I don't know if that's just a Google Play thing. But it's a really nice app. I mean, you've got this really nice, beautiful waterfall. You can have it so you've got your calling screen and your waterfall on the same page you can just look at the decode stuff it's not going to let me you can look at the decode stuff when you're not sending anything and all in all it's an extremely useful application so i hope that was useful um if you've got any questions then please put them in the comments um just leave me a question. If you like what you see, then please send me a, a thumbs up. Um, subscribe to the channel if you really like it and ring the bell. And please don't forget to share. Uh, this is me, uh, Lone Wolf Ham Radio. Finishing this off, and I hope everyone got something out of it. I am going to go now and stop waffling, otherwise I'll be here all day. So thanks a lot, 7 Freeze, all the best, and cheers and beers.